actually differentiate in the practical or pragmatic world uh, the application of the theory. The application of? Of the theory, or of the philosophy. And if it was a, if it's not a philosophy, an actual story, I take it as right. But how do we actually differentiate between the two? And when it comes to pragmatism on ground today, we find that it remains in the oh, an, an abstract world and not a, a real world. How do we actually draw our lessons from uh, what you said, uh, universal? Stroke? Yeah, well, that's what the whole sadhana is about. Um, you see. Of course, you know, most of the time we live in the world, and um, not just the world, but even our own perception of the world, our own experience of the world, tends to be colored by the gunas. And so, therefore, we get happy, we get angry, you know. So, we, we live with the things we experience. Now, what is yoga? It is to withdraw from that. You see, to, to let these tendencies wither away to let these thoughts just uh, die off and not pay them any attention and so withdraw from the world into pure consciousness and once you see there is no consciousness of sensory experiences or of memories or of imagination uh, then it's pure consciousness and then there is no more gunas yes so Thank you so much for the, for the interesting paper. Sir, uh, the question is uh, why always we think of uh, the feminine, the Shakti, the evolution, the universe in terms of three. Can't we make it four? Can't we make it five? Can't it be seven? Why the woman or what we consider to be the feminine comes always in the form of three? Yeah. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, because you shouldn't make it too uh, complicated. Um, you know, four, five, and so on can be analyzed into, into you know, triangles combined. It's what Plato said, the ultimate element, the simplest uh, basic block of the universe is the triangle. You know, and that's, uh, I mean, that's a very pervasive symbolism in Hinduism. The universe is three. Like, for instance, when Vishnu strides around the universe, he only needs three steps. Mm -hmm. Now I've tried to do that, huh? Um, otherwise, you see, I mean, it is a puzzling subject. There's certainly more to it than I've thought of so far. But, I mean, basically it is this, that the, the, the triangle is the simplest form. You see, woman is more than one, but you know you shouldn't complicate matters unnecessarily. So everything that is many is reducible to three sums. Maybe there's more to it, but that's already something I think of. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you so much for that beautiful paper, which is actually transcending the religions. Mm. I wish we could listen more about it because you have taken all uh, part of Christianity and Islam also in this. Yeah. So what is intriguing for me is the three triangles. Yeah. Where is this depicted? If I may know a little more about it. The three triangles which you showed. Yeah. Where is this depiction? Uh, yeah, this is in uh, the Germanic world. Uh, so it's a symbol of Wodan. Mm -hmm. And Wodan, as I have shown, is um, a uh, counterpart, an evolute of Shiva, or rather of Rudra. And um, because at that time the, the term Shiva was hardly in use yet, and so a lot of the symbolism that Rudra has in the Rig Veda is also in Vodan. Like you see, Rudra is one of the atmospheric gods. Yeah. And so, you know, there are 11 of them, as you know. Okay. You see, there are 12 yeah. celestial yeah. gods, which yes. is logical, you know, the, the, the zodiac and so on. Yes. Then there are eight earthly gods, which is also logical, you know, eight is like a cubic number, it's solid and so on, which fits the earth. Yes. Now, 11 fits the atmosphere. You see, it is easy to draw with compass uh, a, uh, uh, an octagon or a dodecagon, but it is hopeless to try to draw one with 11 angles, right? 
it's not only very difficult, it is in principle impossible. Not possible. And um, that's, that fits the atmosphere, you see, the, the wind and so on is unseizable, right? And so, Wodan has that same quality as Rudra. In fact, the word Wodan is linked to the word Vata, which is wind, and which is also one of the atmospheric gods. Um, you know, a lot of the symbolism, like um, Shiva is also connected with intoxication and so on. And um, another word uh, linked is the Latin word Vates, which means an inspired poet. Also someone who is in trance and so on. Um, you know, there are more likenesses, but the, the most striking one, Shiva, as you know, has three eyes. Now, Wodan has one eye. But why is that? You see, in the rough and tumble of the migration from India all the way to, to Scandinavia, you see the most subtle elements of Hindu myths were lost. You know, you have the same thing in Greece, uh, where you have the god uh, Poseidon, who is essentially Shiva. He also has a trident, for example. And uh, you see a lot of the, the symbolism of gods carries over to their son and so on. In this case, his son Polyphemus, he also has only one eye, which is always depicted here, right? In the case of Odin, it's not always depicted here. It can be simply one eye and the other one missing. Uh, but so, in both cases, you see that they don't understand the symbolism of the third eye anymore. So they have a vague notion of story of uh, someone with three eyes, someone with a third eye, but they don't know anymore what it means. And so it takes on very ordinary shapes, like uh, Polyphemus gets his eye poked out by uh, Odysseus. And so similarly, you see, Wodan has only one eye, and there is also an explanation that he lost the other eye as a prize for seeking wisdom. So you still see the connection, right? Yeah. Um, moreover, he is hanging uh, for nine days, nine, in a tree. Um, now, the oldest uh, yoga exercise, physical yoga exercise depicted, is hanging from a tree. All right? Um, a lot more and, and, and Arjuna, Arjuna, during his yoga practice, he practices the vrikshasana, the tree pose, okay? Um, so anyway, so there's a lot in common there's between Rudra and, and Wodan. We can discuss That's about it. it later also. Yes. Yes. I'm really, really sorry to interrupt.